glad Sarah finds me entertaining. My wife used to find me entertaining, but not anymore. Um, I was not going to use the microphone, if you guys are okay with that. I tend to talk loud. I'm from the East Coast, so I tend to talk fast, too, and I'll try not to do that. I'm going to give you a talk today. Uh, you saw the ad in the paper of a guy shushing down the slope, trying to get you back to things. It talks about back and neck pain. The crux of the talk, which is what is minimally invasive surgery? Okay, we call it MIS surgery. And well, you guys know, I mean, they used to take out a gallbladder with a cut that started here and went all the way over here. Now they're doing it with a scope. Okay, so the push in multiple disciplines in medicine is to try to figure out how do you get done what you need to get done with less trauma. Why did minimally invasive spine surgery evolve? The reason it evolved is because I only showed you the bones and the discs, okay? And there's another thing going on here, and that is that if you look at the spine from the back, it's surrounded by muscle. You know, and muscle is what hurts people after surgery, okay? They say that Incisions heal side to side, but they hurt end to end. Meaning the longer an incision, the more pain people tend to have. And so the reason that we even have, say, operating microscopes is so in the days gone by when you had a discectomy in 045 and you ended up with an incision that big, it wasn't because they needed to expose that much of the spine. It was because they needed to expose enough and separate the muscle out enough that the light could get in there that they could see what they're doing. So the value of the microscope that lets you, you know, operate now and do your discectomy through an incision that big is magnification, yes. Okay, and these muscles are, you know, significant. This is the classic lumbar exposure, okay? Patients face down on the operating room table. They have an incision that extends over three spinal segments. They've got these spinous processes, which are the points of bone you can feel right in the midline of your low back. They've got the lamina, which are laid out as we're looking in the spine from the back. They've got the facet joints lined up over here. It does not look like this in the operating room. Always love the anatomical joints. <laughs> the operating room looks like a red hole, and you know where things are, but it's not as clear as this. But this was the classic exposure of a patient, say, for a laminectomy or discectomy, okay? The surgeon would be wanting to go here, remove some of the joint and take out a disc, okay? But he had to do all this just to see where he was going or where she was going. And this is what we have nowadays. So we talked about a scope to take out your gallbladder. Now we have tubes. And the idea is you actually stick a narrow probe through a skin incision and you put it right down on the bone. And then what you do is you pass a dilator over. So you've got a tube and a slightly bigger tube and a slightly bigger tube and a slightly bigger tube. You've got about seven of these. And once you get the biggest tube on there, then you can slide down a, uh, sorry, once you get the biggest dilator on there, then you can slide down the tube, and you can fix this to the table. So now you're looking through the tube with your operating microscope, with your magnification and your light, and you can actually go in and remove only as much bone as you need to to see where you're going and get at the problem that you're trying to fix. What specific equipment and techniques are you? Sarah, where is my bag of tricks? These are not real body parts. Okay, they look like real body parts, but they're not real body parts. Pass them around, give you an idea. Actually, I'll start this one in the back. And you can get a feel for some of the things that we're going to talk about uh, as we go forward here. So, what specific equipment and techniques are used? Well, this is what's called a mini open A lift. So, we have somebody, we need to fuse their back. And what we can actually do through an incision that's typically about three inches long, go through the skin, go through the fat, go around the muscle, 
and you can come down right on the front of the spine. Okay? I finished my training in 1995. We didn't do anything like this. Okay? I've been doing them here since about 2000, 2001. Okay? I did two of these yesterday. Two patients who both needed to have fusions. And this surgery, depending on what you do from the front, because not everything's the same, this surgery takes about an hour. Okay? You need, I need an exposure surgeon, a general surgeon who does the exposure because there are some important blood vessels in there. You want to make sure you don't have any issues with those blood vessels. But this is depicting a relatively small uh, exposure and what they're doing is putting a spacer in the spine where the disc used to be. If we don't want to go in from the front, the patient's too large because you're limited by size. Okay. You can also do a fusion from the back, where through your tube, you can get into the disc, clean out the disc, and what this is depicting is a bunch of bone graft put in where the disc used to be with a spacer that provides support. Okay. When we say fuse, we mean we want, to, we want to try to get one bone to grow into another bone. That's a fusion. Okay. And these are peak cages. They're made out of plastic, medical grade plastic. You can use bone bank bone, okay, and I do sometimes. Uh, you can use plastic. Some people use titanium. I don't prefer titanium because if you ever have a problem, getting titanium out is a hassle. With bone or plastic, you just put a drill in there and buzz it out. With titanium, you've got more of an issue. And the two patients that I operated on yesterday, they had implants put in from the front to jack up their spine and provide a conduit for bone growth for their fusion. We make a little stab wound up here, and this thing perfectly passes the rod through the screw connectors. And it's really slick. It's a brilliant piece of engineering as far as I'm concerned. And what that does is it really, uh, I've had patients go home younger, admittedly, but I had patients go home from a minimally invasive alien with percutaneous screws. I had them go the same day. Okay, that's how much things have changed. When I was a resident, somebody came in to have a fusion. You were in the hospital for a week. Whether you needed to be or not, you were there for a week. Okay? And this has really changed the landscape for us. And this gives you a different idea. Imagine you're at the spine. These screws have gone into the spine, and we use two x-ray machines to actually not put in the screws. We use two x-ray machines to put in wires. And then once our wires are in place, we dilate, open up the muscle, we tap the bone, drill the bone with the handle, and then we put our screw over the wire exactly where we want it. And then when the screw's where we want it, we pull the wire out. It's remarkably slow stuff. This is a uh, x-ray depiction of the surgery. This is a view from the back. What do we have? Well, instead of a regular tube, like I showed you on that cartoon, there are also tubes that you can ratchet open and then angle further. So instead of just looking through a tube that's 16 or 18 millimeters in diameter, now you have a much bigger exposure in the muscle of more than And this shows a screw that's been placed in the pedicle, and it shows this is not a spacer. This is a trial for a spacer. That's why it's all made out of metal. And you're sizing uh, the right size implant to put it in this space. And this gives you an idea of some of the things we're passing around today for the minimally invasive fusion. You've got your feet cage in the disc space. You've got your screws. You've got your rods on. Okay. And this is depicting a two-level fusion, all done from the back and all done from the wing basically. This is how the game has changed. It's yellow, but this is an old-style incision. Okay. This is a minimally invasive fusion incision. 